Hey, welcome back you guys. This is a beginner's guide to taping drywall. I'm going to try and go over everything you need to know for a basic new drywall install. So the first thing you need to know when taping drywall is what kind of joint you're dealing with. This is a butt joint, this is a flat joint, inside corner. How do we know what it is? Okay, so a butt joint is made when you join the two butt ends of a drywall sheet. You can see it's eight feet long right there. So butt joint is a joint that's really flat at first, but then you have to put a piece of tape on it and it gets built out pretty wide. The flat joint right here, the reason they're called flat joints, you can see by this light, it has a rolled tapered edge. The tape is gonna sit in here and you're gonna cover it with mud and this joint ends up actually totally flat. And then the other one, inside corners. That's pretty self-explanatory. And we've got outside corners. With butt joints, I don't like it when they're actually super tight. Most people want them to be super tight, but when they're really tight, you can't get mud into them. And my theory on drywall is that if you can't actually get mud in to glue the sheets together, it's not gonna be as strong as it can possibly be. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a very small 45 on here, which is going to help allow the mud to get into the joint. So this isn't some weird thing I made up. This is actually common practice among a lot of drywallers, especially the good ones who really care about the longevity of their finished work. I only do this to the butt joints. The flat joints, they don't need it. They're a different animal. They'll be fine with just mud and tape. The other thing that needs to be cut out is damaged pieces of board. You'll see how big this one is. So there's a big flap here that's gonna come right out. And you might be thinking, well, how are we supposed to tape that now? We'll get there, we'll get there. This is all part of the prep work. If we don't cut this out and if we just bury it with tape and mud, it's going to become a blister. So that's why it all has to come out. Loose paper like this, we can't tape on that. This is caulking that was left on the wall. We need that all off. So often when you apply mud to the torn paper like this, it'll start to delaminate and blister. There's a lot of different ways you can solve this. You can paint it. I don't have any paint today, so I'm just using what I have, which is just some carpenter's glue. So that's gonna soak in and it's gonna firm it up. It's pretty quick and easy. Spray adhesive works. There's a lot of different things that work. I'm just using what I have on hand today. But sealing the torn paper, there's a lot of debate as to whether it's necessary, but you don't know if it was necessary until after you coat it and get a blister, at which point it's too late. And you definitely wanna make sure you get this stuff off of your knife pretty quick because it'll dry on there and become really hard. So this wouldn't be a beginner drywall video without talking about mesh tape versus paper tape. A lot of people are gonna think that I should be using this when I start to use this stuff almost everywhere. But in my opinion, mesh tape is weaker because you can see through it, right? There I am. So if the joint has a bit of movement and cracks, you're going to see the crack right away. Whereas paper tape, it'll hide it for a little longer. And I also just think that paper tape in general is stronger. This one, it can wiggle, it's got all kinds of movement. That one is bridges the gap much better. So one place you should never be using mesh tape is on your butt joints. Those are the most likely to crack if you use mesh tape. If you really want it to be a cowboy, you can use mesh tape on your flats if you use quick setting muds. We're not there yet though. However, the one place I often do use mesh tape because it speeds me up is on little patches like this. And I do this before I start filling anything in order to actually get this stuff to tear. It's just about the angle you pull it back on. See where my knife is? I pull it back like this real nice and easy. That's why people love this stuff so much. It sticks to the wall by itself. The reason I'm doing this is it's much faster than applying paper tape. 
to all these little things. You'll see why in a bit. So once you have the joints carved out and all the loose material off, it's time to start pre-filling. So I'm going to be using Durabond 90. This product can be found in most places. This is a setting type mud. It comes in powdered form in a bag. This one is 90 minute set time. It's very hard. It's like an incredibly difficult product to sand. If you leave any lumps of it or crusties, you're gonna struggle. So another product that could be better would be a lightweight setting compound. So there's ones called Easy Sand, USG Easy Sand. It's essentially the same thing. It's just not quite as hard. So when mixing this stuff, you want to start with a little bit of water in the bucket. You can also mix up small batches in a pan by hand, but I need enough that it warrants doing it in a bucket. A great small mixing paddle is this one. It can be chucked up into a cordless drill. Works really nicely. Hopefully I didn't put too much water in. Nope. Remember, you can always add more water. You can't really take it out. That looks pretty good. It's not drooping too much. You don't want it too wet for this stage or it'll fall out of all the holes. That cleans it more or less. Okay, so that's a pretty decent consistency. It's wet enough that it's going to slip into the cracks, but it's dry enough that it won't fall out of them. I'm gonna be using six inch knife, sometimes a trowel. This is called a hawk, this is a trowel. 12 inch wide by five inch. Okay, so big voids like this absolutely need pre-fill. I like the trowel because it really forces it in and it's fast. You can use this. Whoop, pigeons. So what I'm being very careful to do at this point is to not leave any thick raised edges or any blobs. Gaps in top corners like this will also need it. The trowel again is a really useful tool to squeeze it in there. It's just easier than the six inch knife. But this is the tool that has the finesse to wipe it out nicely. And again, you really need to not be leaving big blobs of this stuff as it's difficult to scrape down. Okay, that's good there. The flat joints don't typically need it, but this one's a little bit open. So I'm gonna put some in. But you don't want to leave too much material in here or all of a sudden your flat joint won't be a flat anymore because you built it out too much. So the reason we need to do this is that we are gluing the joints shut. I've done a ton of repair work and it's always from joints that don't have enough mud in it. So that's what we're doing. We're putting... So for really big gaps like we had on this wall, this is why it's so important to use quick set. You can see it hasn't shrank at all but it's now dry enough that we can scrape off the high points because there's a couple here. As you can see, it also didn't shrink here, even though we had that huge blowout. And the beauty of using quick set and mesh tape on all the small patches is while you're doing the pre-fill, you can also fill the mesh tape patches. So this part's done and I'm not going to be having to mess around with pieces of paper tape and all purpose mud doing all this little fiddling, it's already done. So that can be left alone until we coat it on the next stage of the job. Outside corners like this also need pre-fill real bad because what will happen is if you don't pre-fill that and you just try and do it when you're installing the corner bead, it's gonna shrink too much in that one spot where you might not even get good adhesion of the corner bead itself and you'll get a blister. 
So that's super important to do on really uneven spots. So we're almost ready to start taping, but before you do, you're gonna to wanna to go around and make sure that in case any of the mud kind of fell out a bit, or you didn't leave it really flat and smooth, that you knock down any high spots. So there was a little one there from the mud falling down in the corners. You know, any little crusties or boogers, you wanna get that stuff knocked down and taken care of because once you put a layer of tape over top of it, it's gonna build it out more than it should be and you can't take it out after at that point. So once you've done that, it's time to mix up the mud and start taping. So for taping today, we're gonna to be using all-purpose. This is a USG heavyweight all-purpose. This is gonna be the exact same product that you're gonna find green lid all-purpose, right? Same thing, super heavy super hard, super sticky. If you're in Canada, you can use a taping mud because you won't be able to find the same thing. That's what I usually use. It does come a little bit too thick in the box. So you will have to add some water. And for taping, you want it kind of runny. There you go. So it's a lot thinner than I had the pre-fill. And for taping, I like to use a pan, a six inch knife. We're just doing basic hand taping, you guys. This is like foundational skills. I'm not teaching you all the different faster, more production methods. This is the bare basics that you need to know to be able to tape drywall. We are going to be using paper tape on a tape spool. You want it so that it comes out like this, not from the top. Okay, let's start with butt joints. So the easiest way to apply the mud is with a side swipe like this. It applies it the fastest. And I often will spread it out just a little bit. Just to make it a little more even consistency. You wanna make sure you have about an eighth of an inch of mud on here. You don't wanna be able to see any bare spots. Get a nice square end on your tape. Go in the middle of your mud bath there. Hopefully, it's in the center of the joint. You'll find out after you wipe it out. And then it's pretty straightforward. Paper mache for adults. So right now I'm not actually wiping it all out. I'm actually just embedding the tape. So sometimes I'll even let it saturate for a second. It's not fast. I have faster methods of taping, but Again, this is the basics. So now I'm wiping a little harder, trying to get most of the mud out from under the tape. That's pretty good right there. So that's how to tape a butt joint. As you can see, there's a little bit of mud underneath everything, but it's still going to be pretty darn flat. Next, we'll do the flat joints. This is generally the sequence that people tape in. Again, the side swipe method. Make sure it's even. And sometimes it can be hard to find the middle. I'll do that occasionally just to make sure I'm actually taping the right spot. If I didn't mention, I'm using a six inch knife. Okay, now we're just gonna wipe the tape out. And all that matters is that it's under that recess. Again, we're not trying to take all the mud out. The corners are a bit tricky for some people. I'll often give it a little wipe like that. Okay, that one's good. So now we need to check the critical part. You can see there's mud underneath everything, but what we need to know is that you can still see daylight through there so that there's actually room to bury that tape in mud because when it gets coated again, 
it won't be with a knife like this but when it gets coated again you can see there's actually a place to hide that tape okay next inside corners everybody's favorite so again i use the side swipe method it's a pretty handy one and i'll show you guys an easier way to do it too i should really get some benches that make less noise they really creak I don't feel like I have enough mud there yet. Okay. And if you have kind of too much anywhere, it doesn't hurt to quickly wipe that down. So, generally, just kind of flat and smoothish. Okay, and now time for the paper tape. So the trick here is fold it. It's got a crease for a reason. Push that pretty close into the corner. I usually go right into the corner. One thing to note is that the tape will drag as you start to wipe it out. So I then pull it out like that. We've gone actually almost a little bit too far out. Just going to pull that off. That's better. I often use my six inch knife to just kind of embed it a little bit. Straightens out that corner. And I almost always start with the bottom first. Well, pigeons. So I was talking about tape drag. I was careful not to pull it super hard and pull that tape into the corner and have it be all bunched up. Then the top. Those corners are the tricky part for people who are new. Just kind of press it all down carefully. And that's it. Next. I'll usually do this one, and then the final one is the upright one, and all of them should go into the corner and kind of overlap. It's pretty simple. Really quickly, I'm gonna show you another method to do this that's way easier, because a lot of people really struggle with applying the mud. Okay, you guys, this is the magic tool. It's called a lamb's wool roller. It's not lamb's wool, it's just some synthetic fiber. But I dunk it in the bucket, I think this is maybe originally for painting, but it's used for this a lot. So that's a lot easier, isn't it? And a lot of professionals actually do it this way too. It's definitely a tool that'll make a homeowner's life a lot easier. I find it kind of messy, but it's fast. Oh, I forgot to crease the tape. That might cause me grief. It's hard to remember to do everything right when I'm busy talking on a video but it wipes out really easy. So definitely a very useful tool. I think it'll make a lot of your life easier. Again, link in the description if you're looking for one, if you can't find one at your local hardware store. Doesn't have to be pretty for the whole process. It should just be clean and tidy when you're done. You don't want to leave a mess in the corners or you're going to cause yourself grief later. So, as you can see, that's all looking pretty tidy now. That's a very easy way for beginners to do corners. Okay, next we have outside corners. This one's a little bit tall. I could get a tape measure, but if I recall correctly, it's only about an inch and a half to two inches. These are nine foot ceilings. Let's see. No, a little more. On the next one, I'll know. Cut two inches off right away. So you just use a pair of tin snips to cut corner beads. A good pair of tin snips 
should be able to cut paper. This is a great pair. I've had it forever and it never seems to get dull. I also always take the cut and I put it on the bottom because the cut tends to get a little bit flared out. And if you put that at the top, you'll often see that the corner doesn't quite have the right shape. So, apply in a sideways motion. And I like to leave a lot of mud under the corner beads so that we don't get blisters. So I'm leaving, you know, a generous eighth right here. I try and make sure it gets left pretty flat. The flatter your mud is, the flatter your corner bead install will be. It won't be built out too much in one spot and not enough in another. So that's pretty good. So I like to get corner beads from the actual drywall supply. This metal part is usually a little bit wider than it is on the ones that you get from the big box stores. The narrower this is, the harder time you will have covering this space from here to here. And especially if it's 5 8 drywall and you have a big gap, that's where you will start to get a blister forming in the paper between the metal and the flange. So just sort of right in there, if there's not enough mud, this part will be loose and floppy. And it'll show through on your successive coats. I'll often pop it down on the corner there and push up. And then I just kind of give it some jiggles here. We're trying to get it on nice and square and even. Hopefully the framing's pretty straight. I could have checked that, but it looked pretty good. I'm now just kind of gently embedding the flange into the mud to make sure that it all has contact with it so that there's less of a chance to get blisters. Okay, and now I'm going to start wiping the mud out, but not all of it, because once we wipe it tight, we can't adjust the corner bead. And you'll see why we might need to adjust the corner bead. Okay, so here's what we need to check for. There has to be some daylight there and it has to be the same on the other side. If the corner bead is out of square, you're going to have too much light on one side and not enough here, and you will have a hard time hiding the flange. And in some cases, it can be pushed over so far that you actually have to build out this side just to make it look decent, and then your corner won't be as strong. So I'm repositioning that making it even on both sides, even on both sides. Check it all the way up and down, we're good. So once you see that it's square and there's daylight so that you have room to hide that flange, then you can start actually wiping it out. And I wipe these out pretty tight. It won't take it all out. Now again, I'm going to check at the bottom, both sides. I'll check on the way up, both sides looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Now, because I know it's on square, I can wipe this out a little harder to ensure that it's actually stuck down. Okay, that one's done. So once you've done all that, now it's time to do screws. So screws need to be quiet. So I just gotta install another one. I didn't use this drill, I used a drywall drill, but let's say it's like that and you try and coat it. Oh, what's going on? Shouldn't make that sound should be buried and the paper shouldn't be torn. So this is well installed and it's simple. 
So I just need to give this about a quarter turn. So if you haven't installed your screws well, you're gonna have to carry around a screwdriver with you when you spot them. So the trick here is you go in one direction to put it on and one to take it back. The reason you need to do this is if you go in the same direction, it doesn't get filled quite properly and there's also often a little air pocket in the X of the screw. So you have to wipe in the other direction to get rid of that little air pocket in the X and make sure it's full. So it's simple, like that. You take off everything you put on. There's, you're not leaving anything. And I don't usually do it this way, but there is, you know, the kind of pro way. Looks fancy. I usually do them one at a time. It puts less mud on the wall, but you know. To me, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. But that's how you do screws. And I do screws after I tape. The reason is there's a lot less screws after you tape. See how all those screws are covered by tape. In the corners, we have a bunch of screws covered by tape. So basically, yeah, you're just gonna coat a lot less. You don't need to run around coating all the screws in the joints. So yeah, the general order of things was prep, pre-fill, tape the butt joints, tape the flats, tape the corners, tape the outside corners, coat the screws. That is day one. And I did also, you know, I didn't mention the mesh tape and the patches. You can do this with paper tape on the patches, but you don't have to. Anyways, this is like the most basic way to tape drywall. I have tons. I have five years of videos of more complicated or more interesting ways to tape drywall, but this is the bare basics, the fundamentals of taping drywall. And um, yeah, one thing I left out is, see this little bit right here where there was that blowout? That should have a tape. Sorry, I'm getting ADD on you guys, but that is important. There we go. That's the fundamentals of taping drywall. So uh, be sure to tune in to the following videos because we're going to do day two, how to coat drywall. Day three, how to sand and do your final coat, and day four, sanding drywall. All of them are equally as important, but this is probably the longest video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Guys, I hope your projects are going really well, but I hope you are doing even better. Till the next one.